And now I can go back to. OK, um, so last week when we were uh, talking about uh, animation, um, we talked about these 12 principles of animation. Uh, and in these 12 principles of animation, we see uh, different t ways that we can communicate, uh, ways that we can embellish, ways that we can you know, make our animations. Um, so I want to give an example of that. I'm trying to click on on that one. So I'm going to do an example of squash uh, using the animation that I'm working on. Um, and it's not going to look as exciting as this one, because this is, you know, a lot of work and detail went into this. But you can see it's going to be the same uh, basic idea. Um, and I'm also going to show you guys, I'm going to show you guys a couple different ways to use it. One is using curves. We're going to look at the curve editor in After Effects. And then the other is just doing regular animation with the scale. Um, so I'm going to go to my uh, After Effects project. I should have opened this before, but let's get that loaded up. Gonna close Illustrator while that's going. So hopefully that will my computer a little bit more with. Uh oh. Okay, um, hopefully, let's try that one more time. Oh, there we go. Now it's opening. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've got uh, the animation I started last week. And right now we've got uh, some bouncing circle and this kind of spinning circle and triangle. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to take one of my bouncing circles and just kind of work on it uh, to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, so I'm going to open up my circles uh, composition. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. Uh, hit Control P -E to duplicate this. And I'm going to just focus on one circle. Uh, so I'm going to delete the other two circles that I made, make this a little bit simpler. Um, with So uh, if I open up the keyframe area and go to the transform, you can see I keyframed the position last time. So it goes up a little bit and then comes back down. Um, and that looks OK, but it looks very sort of, it uh, doesn't look very natural, right? Because it's just going straight up, and then it's coming straight down. There aren't a lot of things in the real world that have such spin as this. So if I slow it down a little bit, you know, it looks like an elevator or something. Even an elevator wouldn't probably be uh, sort of smooth. Uh, change my work area a little bit. Focus on the section. Okay, so we can see we just have this really smooth linear animation. And there's a couple things that I can do to make this look more interesting. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my curve editor or the graph editor called here. Uh, and so there's a bunch of buttons up here in my animation tool. And this little one that looks like a little uh, graph is the graph editor. And if we click on here, you can see the animation occurring over time for the position. And so there's actually two lines on here. One is the red line, uh, which represents the X position. Uh, and that is like the horizontal position. Since our circle isn't moving left and right, you can see that that line is just completely flat. It doesn't change at all. Um, and then the green line down here 
that represents our y position. Um, and that, of course, is changing because our circle is going up and then down. Uh, and so it's a little bit hard to see in here. Um, let me see if I make this a little bit bigger. So you can see there's a number there that's like around 500, and then it goes up something lower, and then it goes back down. So the Y value actually gets larger as we go down the page, which is why it looks like in the animation window, it looks like it's actually going down even though we see it going up. So that might be a little confusing, but that's just the number that's actually changing. So if we, we scroll to the middle here, and then I look at the number right there, it's 85. Uh, and then we, when we go back to the beginning, the value is 540. So the Y starts at the top, zero, and then goes down to the bottom. That's why we see this line go down and then go up, see the circle go up and then go so it's just relative to how uh, the y value works. Okay, so since this line is a straight line, that's why the, the motion is very smooth and robotic. And so I can change this line by clicking on these yellow dots. These yellow dots are the keyframes. And if I click on them and then go over here, I can change these lines in curves. Uh, and so if I click on this curve, see how it it suddenly changes uh, to a curve, and we're going to see that that motion is a little bit more natural. So with this curve, it's a little bit flat at the beginning, so it isn't moving quite as fast. And then as the curve gets more steep, that means it's moving faster. It's changing more as time progresses. And then the curve kind of flattens out at the end, so it kind of slows when it gets to the end. And so that looks a little bit more natural, except we actually want a different version of this curve. If I can get the right one. So I'm going to select this yellow. Uh, okay, I'm going to click outside to deselect everything. Then I'm going to select that first point, and I'm going to try uh, clicking on these. Oh, I guess I have to select both. Okay, so what I want, I think, oh, I won't let me. Okay, so that's auto. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to to ease. And so as it gets towards the top, it starts to slow down a little bit. And so that gives us a sense of gravity. So it's not moving quite as fast as it goes. OK, so let's see if I can edit the actual um, values. OK, so if I click on this, it separates the dimension. And now I can focus just on the Y. So I can ignore the X. Uh, and then I can fit. The graph using this button and now what i want to try to do okay so let's select both of these and now i can actually uh oh no that's not what i want uh oh okay i just left okay so i'm going to select x and y separate dimensions click on the y and then i'm going to try to select And shoot in. And then now here, this is where it gets really tricky because it's kind of hard to see this, but there's a little yellow handle here. And I can drag this out. And the more I drag this out, the more dramatic that easing is going to be. Okay, so that actually looks kind of fun, right? It's starting, it starts off really fast and then it slows down. And so that's a little bit emphasized. That's a little exaggerated. It's using the realism of gravity, but it's actually exaggerating it a lot. So we get this new effect. Now I'm going to try to recreate that on the other. Click on this key and then select this keyframe. And I'm holding shift, so I have both keyframes. I'm going to do ease out to get the opposite curve. And then I'm going to drag this over, exaggerate it a lot. And so now we'll see this effect of gravity much more clearly.
So that's pretty cool. I want to maybe make it stick a little bit at the end because it just keeps going. So let's drag this out a little bit and then uh, let's see. So this goes here. Let's put another keyframe right there. I'm going to click on the keyframe button. And so it just flattens out at the end. Okay, so then let's move this in a little bit. So this is a little bit more advanced. You guys don't have to do this exactly, uh, but I did want to give you the possibility to do something uh, with a little bit more of a natural feel. And this can be tricky to get at first. Um, so, you know, you might want to play around with it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So we have easing in to the top and then speeding up as it goes back down. It does just kind of like land really abruptly. So that's not very uh, natural looking. So of course I could play with it more there. You can spend a lot of time kind of like playing with this stuff, um, get it right. Uh, but, you know, I just want to kind of show the basics. So the next thing I want to do, uh, I'm going to save that real quick and I'm going to leave graph editor view. The next thing I'm going to do to kind of emphasize this is the squash and stretch. So I'm going to use the scale, uh, and we can see the scale has x and y values. And right now, see how there's this little link right here? If I scale one up, it's going to scale both of them. Um, and actually, I don't want to use the scale for uh, transform, because that's the whole scene. I want to use the scale for the ellipse. So I'm going to open up. Uh, so I'm going to go to the contents of the ellipse, open that up go into the transform for the ellipse. So it's a little hard to find this, but here's the scale here. So now if I scale this up, notice that the shape changes. But I wanna scale on different dimensions. So I'm gonna uncheck this little link here. And now I can set the scale uh, for the X and Y at different points. So I'm gonna throw a key. Frame. And then I'm gonna squash this down. So I'm gonna uh, take the Y scale and squish it down a little bit. And then when I get kind of halfway between uh, my two parts of the animation, I'm gonna put the Y back to 100. I might even do like more. And now I'm gonna scale down the X. So I'm gonna scale the X down to like 50. So now it kind of stretches out. And then when we get to the end of this curve, like right here, uh, let's go back to just regular, 100 and 100. So now we can see the squash and the stretch is going along with the rest of the animation. So let's move this keyframe over just a little bit, this keyframe up just a little bit. And then I'm actually going to copy these. Instead of redoing this whole thing, I'm just going to copy this keyframe and paste it on the other side. Then I'm going to copy this keyframe and paste it over here. And then at the very end, I'm just going to set everything back to 100. So it'll look regular at the end. OK, so now we can see it. So I need to basically try to line up the longest part of the of the circle with the fastest part of the animation. So I'm gonna drag these back a lot. Get that to okay, that's way too. I'm gonna drag it way back here. So it happens pretty quickly. There we go, that's much better. Uh and then so here, it starts to transform back like that a little bit early. So I'm actually going to take this keyframe, copy it, and paste it. So that's the same keyframe, but I want it to kind of stick there just a second. And then it starts to form again. And let's just move. And move this one over here. So you can see you have to spend a lot of time kind of like working with this to get it exactly right. Hard to, uh, you know, get the timing exact. But once you get it right, it's it's pretty satisfying. Just keep.
Okay, so that has to happen a lot faster. Okay, so I'm actually gonna move this even closer down here. Uh, and let's move. Okay, so it looks a little goofy. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time making it look perfect because it... hopefully that gives you a sense of how we can do one of those slightly more advanced examples, being squash and stretch, or um, one of the other <laughs> examples that we use. Um, all right, so I'm gonna save this and then I will stop the recording.